with Owen. Uh, uh, all this week, Owen is showing us how to get our gardens blooming for this season. Owen, I'm so excited about this. Me too. Yeah. We, have, we have so much to talk about. And I love, you know, it's the gardening season. It is. Everybody's feeling like it's getting a little bit warmer, mm -hmm. getting a little sunnier. Time to get out. And we're going to talk about some plants today. You kind of touched on this yesterday. Yes. Like annuals, perennials, and shrubs. Yes. Today we're getting into it. We're getting a little bit more specific. Yeah. So the main distinction when we're looking at these three different plants, mm -hmm. annuals, they live for just one season. Okay. And they get as big as they get in one season, but they don't live through the winter. Mm. So we use them a little bit differently. A lot of times they're in containers. That's probably the most common use for them. Yeah. But you absolutely can use them in the garden as well. Um, so we're going to look at a couple of different ones here. Okay. Um, so we've got, this is called Cleome. And this Ooh. is one of my favorite sun annuals. Mm -hmm. uh, we call the spider flower is the more common name. Spooky. So this is a great bedding plant because it's kind of bushy. It gets mm -hmm. to be a decent size by the end of the season, produces these flowers constantly all summer. Mm. And if you've got a hot, dry spot, this is a really good plant. Oh. And it has a fun name too. This is called Senorita Rosalita. Oh, wow. Well, well. <laughs> So it sounds that, like a song. That, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's the variety of that particular one. Mm -hmm. I love that plant. There's an old school version, much bigger. I like the. I like this, this one. This tiny it's, one, it's so cute. I love I it. I agree. Yeah. I yeah. agree. And then for the shade, mm -hmm. um, I should say the preference for annuals in the sun or the shade, very important. Oh, okay. So we don't want to put shade annuals in the sun, mm -hmm. uh, it might they might die. Oh, and in okay. the case of sun annuals, if you put them in the shade, they're just not going to flower. No. So make sure you know which one goes where. Mm -hmm. And this is a great shade plant. So this is coleus. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a huge variety of coleus, many sizes, many leaf shapes, many leaf colors. Like this is coleus as well. <gasps> These look Ooh, super different, right? This one. I want my garden to look weird. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah this is like an undersea creature, this yeah. one, right? So, um, love those. They're very easy care, really <laughs> drought tolerant, which is a little bit tricky to get in the shade actually with annuals. Yeah. So they're awesome. Just make sure you uh, check and see how big they get. That's an important distinction. That's key. Now, where would we get plants like this? Just like. Yeah. So <laughs> all of what we're talking about today came from Vandermeer <laughs> Nurseries. <laughs> awesome selection. They got beautiful stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, right on. And now we've got that. Those are ones that you said work nicely in a planter. Mm -hmm. You can plant them in the ground, but. What about things like like these guys? Yeah, these are perennials. Okay. And so perennial means this is going to come back every year. It'll mm -hmm. live through the winter. That's mm -hmm. the main thing. Mm -hmm. So everything above the ground mm -hmm. will get killed in the winter, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. It grows back from the roots oh. in the springtime. Mm -hmm. So the roots stay, they go dormant, everything comes back, but everything above the ground dead, so we just chop it off, and then it grows right back. A lot of sizes, a lot of shapes, a lot of colors, and the sun and shade preference is maybe not quite as strong with these as it is with annuals. Mm -hmm. You're going to have some more flexibility with whether it goes in the sun, maybe part sun. They don't have a really strong preference. Right on. Um, so we're going to start with our shade plants in this case. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start with hostas, of course. Love a hosta. Now, hostas are amazing plants. There are jillions of them, yeah. all <laughs> kinds of sizes and shapes. But it's really important to read the tag when you're getting a hosta because some hostas are like the size of a pie plate. Yeah. And some hostas are the size of a small car. I was so, say, mine is like a VW bug. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you, it's really important to know because they're going to have a good spot and a bad spot. Mm -hmm. If it's a really big one, really aggressive growing one, you got to give it room. Yeah. Like, let it have some space. But uh, there, I love these. I use them all the time when I'm designing. Mm -hmm. um, and some of these will take sun, but okay. not all. So check the tag and just make sure that, you know, if you're putting it in more sun, that it will tolerate sun. Right on. Uh, and then when it comes to sun perennials, mm -hmm. a lot of the sun perennials, generally, they want to be in the sun. They're going to bloom best there. Uh, and then, you know, some are very drought tolerant. Mm -hmm. So depending on the kind of spot you have, you do a little bit of research. This is salvia, which is sage. Oh. This is perennial sage. So the kind that we grow for cooking, Ooh. that's an annual. Mm -hmm. This is a perennial, but we don't use this one for cooking. Don't eat this one. <laughs> don't eat this one. It's safe to smell, right? It's very safe okay, to good. smell. And just I, smelling it. it yeah, yeah, and it has a beautiful it's fragrance. It's so nice, yeah. Um, and it produces these spiky tall flowers. They're a great cut flower. Mm -hmm. And if you have a hot, dry location, this is one of the very best plants for those spots because you don't have to be out there watering all the time. It'll be happy. They're great for drought tolerance. And uh, and also, yeah, great cut flowers. So feel free to snip those stems, put them in a little bud buzz in the house. They're so and pretty. I know. I, I use this as another one of my very favorites. I use it all the time. Yeah. Now, what about these babies? Um, yeah, so and the next one mm -hmm. is shrubs. Mm -hmm. uh, so the difference between a shrub and a perennial, both are perennial. Mm -hmm. But a shrub, the leaves die in the fall. 
uh, they fall off, die in the winter, and the plant will grow back from the branches. Oh, okay. So this is a woody plant, and perennials are not woody. So that's the kind of fine distinction. Okay. Uh, generally speaking, shrubs are going to be bigger than perennials, but that's not a, a hard and fast rule. Mm -hmm. uh, but generally, they're bigger, so we need to give them more room to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, and much like perennials, the preference for sun and shade is maybe not super strong, mm -hmm. but they're going to be happiest if you put them where they want to be. Yeah. They're going to be easier to care for. They'll bloom better in the case of the flowering ones. So uh, in the case of hydrangeas, these are far and away the most popular flowering I shrub. Love. Yeah. The common mistake I find people make with this is they put it in blasting sun. This plant does not want to be in blasting sun. It wants morning sun, perfect, <laughs> afternoon shade. Because otherwise, you are going to need to be out there all the time watering, and who wants to do that? Just put it in a spot where it gets shade in the afternoon, and it'll be so much better. Oh, I like that. That's good. It kind of makes sense, too, because when you cut the flowers off, as soon as they're, they're just, ugh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, hydrangea, hydration, yeah. you, know, oh. it's a, you know, it's an important thing. Did so. you just blow everybody's <laughs> mind? I was like, that was amazing. So what about if you're looking to plant these babies? Yeah, planting, mm -hmm. absolutely. So uh, in the case of hydrangeas, and we've got another kind of hydrangea here. Mm -hmm. These are two different families. Check the sizes, they vary a lot. Yeah. This plant is like three by three, this is like 10 by 10. Oh! Huge difference in size. See, I would have thought because the smaller leaves it would be smaller, but that doesn't make any sense. Right, no, yeah, yeah it's, it's, just, it's the opposite. They yeah. produce huge flowers. Yeah. Though. So what we're gonna do to plant these is we've already got a prepared bed. Mm -hmm. So um, you're gonna wanna make a hole that's about twice as wide as got whatever it. you're doing. Mm -hmm. In our case, the soil is very loose, so we do, we're gonna cheat a little bit. Yeah. But twice as wide, but the same depth. And it's better to have the plant shallow than it is deep. We oh. don't want them too deep in the soil. Okay. Otherwise, the roots, uh, they kind of drown and okay. the plant will not be happy. So we're going to kind of gently, you know, make a mess in the studio. <laughs> and, uh, and then we're going to have a look at the roots when we take this thing out of its pot. So you can see this has been in a container. Yeah. It's the exact same shape as the container. Yeah. And we don't want this uh, to happen because what can happen is the roots will just keep growing in a circle. Oh, like a so, twister. Like they just keep wanting to grow. Okay. Exactly. And for things like shrubs and especially trees, they'll actually choke themselves out over time and Ooh. it can kill the plant. Ooh. So what we do, and if you want to give me a with this, Mary. Yeah, let's do so it. we literally just kind of oh, pull, just scrunch it yeah, up. Just pull the roots <laughs> apart, and we want to encourage it to just kind of branch out and grow sideways in the soil. It's okay that oh, a worm. Uh, see, you got a bonus. Oh worm. my gosh, this is why I love a garden. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get. No. So I... we just loosen these roots up, uh, you know, bottom sides, all of this. Okay. And it's okay if you break them; they'll grow back. Oh, okay, cool. And if it's super, super tight, you actually want to get like a knife and cut through really? the roots. Really? Yeah, believe it or not. See that. Feels like that would kill it, but they grow back. They, they grow keep back. Going. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to set it in there, and we're going to try and make sure the level of the soil in our, you know, the top of the pot mm -hmm. is pretty much level with the soil in our garden. We don't want it way, way deeper than that. Okay. And then we just kind of gently pat the soil in around the uh, around the plant, mm -hmm. and then we water after that. And the other thing I should say, it, watering before and after planting, so water in the pot first, is a good way to do it, especially with annuals. Mm -hmm. And then water kind of like the whole garden afterwards. All right. That's so basically, you want to keep it nice and juicy. Yes. And then you get really messy. Yes. And that's gardening. And that's that's okay. the, yeah. But yeah. 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 <laughs> you have to do it once. You get dirty once, and then it's just and watering. You're good to go. Oh, and it's fantastic. Now you're with us each day this week, mm -hmm. showing us more tips in the garden. I can't wait. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my Looking gosh, it's gonna it. be great. We gotta take a quick break, and don't forget to tune in to Growing with Ellen tomorrow and the rest of the week. We'll see you soon. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.